multi-culinarity test. And that is talking about how inter-associated they are. The, inter the independent variables, you want them to be independent. You don't wanna have a strong relationship between those. And in this instance, it did um, fail that there was a very high um, correlation. It wanted a point less than a 0 0.5 and I had a 0 0.975. We also found that there wasn't a, an equal variance among the data. And um, that's with the variance and covariance matrices. So they, the data was not varied. The last bullet point I think is, is very important. And it talked about the mean and the standard deviation. And I thought it was interesting that even though there was a lot of correlation among the independent variables and the dependent variables, the students who were tr not truant displayed a higher scale score and a higher mean, a standard deviation, than the students who were truant. So them being in class made an impact, um, regardless if it made a significant difference. It did make an impact. The Wilkes Lambda is the multivariate statistic that I used to determine if there was a significant difference between the Tennessee Ready, ELA, and the math scale scores and attendance. Um, you're looking for a value of less than 0 0.05, and I had a value of 0 0.405, so we did, according to that, it was not statistically significant. There was not a statistically significant difference between those. So after I ran that, we started on the same test. We did a MANOVA one more time, only I removed those eight outliers that we found from the distance test. Um, and some changes happened. The first change that happened was on the normal QQ plots. Both sets of data now followed the diagonal line, so it became distributed that way. Um, I thought that was important. There were no univariate univariate or multivariate outliers this time and um, we had removed them so there, there was still a linear correlation between them they were still related uh, when one change happened to one a change happened to the other however we still had um multi-culinarity um, however if you look at the numbers they are actually smaller so i needed to have i did not need greater than 0.5, and I got a 0.671, so that was a little bit closer to that margin. Um, however, there was um, variance. There was equal variance among the data once those outliers were removed, so that was a change. Just like with the first um, MANOVA that I ran, the non truant pupils still displayed higher scale scores on the ELA and math than their truant peers. However, the margin is very small. Um, so taking out those out outliers made a, a big impact on those numbers. Um, then I ran the Wilkes Lambda and to look for this, to see if there was a significant difference, there was not um, according to the, the Wilkes Lambda again. I was looking for a 0 0.05 and I got a 0.974. So just to clarify and reiterate, research questions. We were looking to see if there was a significant difference between those Tennessee Ready Math and ELA scores and um, people who were true in 2016-17 but not 17-18 and those were not true in either year and there was a not a, a significant difference in either of those. So what does that mean for me? So the study's results were not something that I anticipated. I anticipated there would be a bigger difference but the study's still valuable to me because now that I know that that didn't work, I can say, what do I do now? How can I take that knowledge and apply it to my school and to my work, what I do now? And um, truancy's not gonna go away, it's still gonna be a problem. And um, so we need to be able to address that. So in looking at what do I do now, I found some additional research studies that talk about how immediate instant gratification affects long-term goals. So if we can get our students to feel good about coming to school and to have some kind of extrinsic reward, then maybe they're gonna have long-lasting success. 
some of the suggestions were motivational rewards like field trips and prizes, certificates, letting them have extra outside time, um, things of that nature. Something that doesn't tax the system financially, easy to provide, easy to track, and easy to do. Um, some of the things that I did once I got the results was I spoke with my principal and our assistant director about what can we do? How can we, how can we fix this problem? How can we address it? And we started pulling our students' attendance records and looking for a pattern and finding out which groups of students are missing large amount of school. Um, are they missing more the first semester or the second semester? Are they missing more the first nine weeks or the second nine weeks? And discussing ways that we could prevent that based on each semester or each nine weeks period to, to address and increase our attendance. Um, some of the things that we've done was we started monitoring everyone's attendance. Um, if you have 100% attendance, then you get some kind of a reward. If you've increased your attendance, say you got three days more this four weeks than you did last four weeks, you get recognized for that. We're focusing on trying to get those motivational extrinsic rewards for instant gratification because according to the research, that's what our kids need. Um, we're using a lot of the theories from the operant conditioning to find out what kind of punishers and consequences or reinforcers it takes for our clientele. Um, we're a very poor school in a very poor district. And so things that are motivational techniques to our students might not be applicable to everyone, but it's so far it's working. Um, we're also listing, and um, one of the things I liked was the third bullet point, um, reference guides. We have them listed in the classrooms now. We have them going home to parents that talk about these are the rewards. These are the rules for attendance. This is why you need to be there. These are the rewards you're going to get. These are the consequences that you get for not being there. And we talk about them more. And the more we're talking about them, the more students are seeming to understand why we want you to come to school. Um, we also have talked about, if this didn't work, looking at the attendance and the correlation between the T and ready math and social, math and ELA, I'm sorry. What can we do? Um, what else can we look at? And we have suggested maybe looking at science and social studies. They're tested subjects now. So how does that attendance affect those scores? And overall, looking at, the, at a whole, if we combine the math, the ELA, the science and social studies, would that impact it? Would two years impact? Would three years impact? trying to broaden our basis of what we can do and um, how can we meet these needs because they're obviously a need there. Um, we've also been speaking with some of the other districts in the area that kind of meet our clientele and seeing what they're doing. If they're having success, um, there's no need to reinvent the wheel, but we need to, to be willing to talk to people and take ideas and share them. So, those are some of the things that strategies that we have been working on since the studies ended. And that is, that is me in a nutshell. How did, how, how did it go? I know I talked fast. I'm sorry. It's okay. I think you covered everything really very well. Um, do any of the other members need the PowerPoint? We'll, we'll take it down. And then did, did I hit the button wrong? No, that's fine. Okay. I'm taking it down since I thought we did. Now, I don't have a lot because you and I have been through this thing for months. And so, yeah. <laughs> basically, I, um, I'd like, you, you do something with truancy at your school, don't you? Other than, you're, yeah. I know you teach, but. I'm the attendance designee. So, if you miss three unexcused days, I call you okay. and ask why you are not at school. So, so and that, that would be one reason you're interested in this, I guess. Yes. Now, um, other than um, what you said with all your recommendations and working with the school system and so forth, do you have anything else you'd like to do with this study? Um, I would like to present it to our school board. And um, I have been speaking with our, and they are interested in the study and interested in the stuff that we found. So we have been in contact and trying to talk about what to do there and set up a time to to present it and um, maybe present it at a conference as well. 
Okay. Now, I know that when you and I saw the event, initially it was like, oh, well, we, just, we weren't really disappointed, but we were sort of surprised. Uh, is that the way you felt? Were you surprised at what you found or, or not? So. I was surprised, and um, even though my clientele is a little different um, as far as motivation, I still thought that there would be a larger difference between if they were in class and if they were not in class. Mm -hmm. um, I was surprised by that, yes. Yeah. I, thought, I thought we'd have some better numbers. But I think you've taken what we found and made some very good use of it, um, obviously. But would you have done anything differently with the study, looking back? I think that if I would have done it again, I would have liked to look at all four areas, um, the science and the social studies. The only problem with that with the years that I chose, they weren't tested subjects. So I'm not sure how valid that would be. But in the future, I would like to look at those. Um, after this year, especially when the science scores are actually tested. Okay. I think that would be very beneficial to my district. Okay. I just have one more thing. I, it's sort of a vague question, so it's a Dr. P question. So, uh, all right. I, what did you learn from this? I mean, other than the data that you got, what did you learn from going through this process of doing a study like this? Um, I learned that it's okay to not know and that you just have to ask questions and I ask a lot and a lot of questions. Um, see, and you agree, I do, I ask a lot of questions and I think that that's important, that that's the only way we're going to know things. And But once you get the questions and you get your answers, then you need to apply that. You don't just ask a bunch and then let it sit. Um, so I, I think that's the, the main thing. Okay that it's okay and to have those conversations and to, to just be willing to be wrong and be willing to not know, but admit it. Uh, we still do that, don't we guys? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know the old saying, you get a bachelor's degree when you know everything, yeah. a master's degree when you realize you don't know everything, <laughs> and a doctoral degree when you realize nobody knows anything. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, that's all I have. I'll, I'll turn that over to the other gentleman. I'm going to let Dr. Barnes jump in. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate you letting me sit in and listen to your um, research and what you found out. And it sounds like you had a, a nice study. And um, I was going to say, how big is your population size? Was it what, about 150 students? And, and what grades was it? It was 144 students, um, grades three through eight, because those are the ones that take the TCAP. Right. Um, the, pop, the whole county has quite a few more than that students, but um, I think there was six, 800 maybe. 800 uh, total in your school, or was it like system wide? We did, we did system wide. System wide. I thought that would be a better study, more, mm -hmm. more people. What stirred your thought for this particular type of study? Why was this, um, I guess, the area that you were seeking? Well, I'm the attendance designee for our school. And right. I also have taught middle school for the past 14 years. So that age group is, is, is my thing. I like them. Um, and the Tennessee Ready, that, those tests that they take, we're constantly telling them, you need to come to school, you need to come to school. And I felt that I needed some proof to why you need to come to school. Mm -hmm. I thought that would help me be a better educator. So that's why I focused on that. I taught middle school for a while and I really enjoyed that grade level, don't you? I do. They're still needy, but they're not mean. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Okay, thank you. So, um, did you feel comfortable with the statistics at the beginning of this? No, no. And I didn't want to do quantitative at the beginning. I thought it was too hard, to be honest. Um, but then we had that class and I really thought that I could do the quantitative a little bit better than the qualitative. And so it was eye-opening experience to change because I was really dead set against it to start with. 
Yes, you were. And I'm going to uh, second the notion that you uh, may have asked a few questions. Just a smidge. Along the way. <laughs> yeah, just a few. Um, but you've, you've done superbly and you, 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 you did the right thing in analysis, which was figured out what's not just right and you altered the test to, to make it more meaningful. And uh, so I was quite impressed with that. Uh, so in case you missed it, I just said you went from, oh my God, it's statistics to, wow, good job with the statistics. Oh, thank you. It was hard. <laughs> okay, so take a deep breath. Now, uh, let's say you get on the elevator with the uh, uh, person in charge of all the Department of Education at, at State of Tennessee. You have 60 seconds to tell them what you learned and why they should care and what to do about it. Go. That's me. I think that what she learned was that attendance matters. It might not be significant right then it might take a year or two or three for that attendance to catch up but there is an there is an attachment um, between attendance and achievement and we need to focus more on getting our parents aware and getting our students aware of why they are missing and why it's important for them to come in order for us to move forward and be successful in education that's good <laughs> good yeah absolutely Absolutely. I think we, we, a lot of things before this study were taken for granted. And I think it took us a while going back and forth to figure out what your questions really should be. Yes, we had lost conversations. Uh, but I think, I think this is what you wanted to actually know. And uh, so it's a powerful thing. Well, Dr. Price, I'm sorry that I don't have any tough questions because we asked all of them before. Well, uh, maybe Dr. Hollings has a few <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I was having some technical issues just a moment ago. We all did. I so think. I dialed in on my cell phone instead of the computer. Well, um, I would just like to ask, I think it was a very interesting study, of course. Uh, maybe what was the, what was the most challenging aspect of your research and then maybe what advice would you give someone else as they come into this like you have I always like to hear that my most challenging was once i got the results and i had to present that to my principal and an assistant director that said hey you know that attendance really didn't matter very much um, it didn't make that big of an impact and explaining the process to them when they weren't really with me step by step on the statistics that was a difficult i think that was the most difficult part of it um the actual when i'm doing the study was trying to understand dr taylor's um love of statistics that was probably the most challenging because it's hard yes um yes what i would suggest with the people that are starting the program is have a really great team with you and i think that i have excellent um I could not ask for better people to support me. So those, those would be my suggestions. That's excellent. Very good. And I know we could all agree you did a great job on the statistics. I, it was very impressive. So all right, thank you. That's all I have. Oh, okay then. Well, we're going to ask you, Lisa, to step out of the room for three minutes. Three minutes. All right, I got you. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, yeah. You did a great job. Wow. <laughs>